The air is filled with the thundering shouts of war horses, the thunderous roars of soldiers, and the clashing of steel as they engage in combat. As troops clad in chainmail and plate armor engage in intense hand-to-hand -hand combat, the ground is muddy, bloody, and slick with both the rain and the blood of their opponents. You have arrived to a battlefield in medieval Europe, a place where chivalry and barbarism coexist and where life can be extinguished in an instant. On any given medieval battlefield, there would have been a variety of soldiers to face off against one another. It was important for kings and generals to have a diverse array of individuals under their command who possessed a variety of abilities that could help them prevail in any conflict. We'll be covering the most prevalent varieties. Knights. Within the intricate web of medieval warfare, knights were frequently the most prominent and acclaimed characters at various points in time. These exceptional fighters were often of noble ancestry and had been schooled from an early age in both the arts of combat and the norms of chivalry. They were known for their ability to ride war horses while wearing heavy plate armor. They led charges, engaged in single battle with enemy knights, and played an important role in the overall effort to break enemy lines. Men at Arms Men-at-arms, who were professional soldiers in the service of a lord or monarch, played an important supporting function for them. Men-at-arms formed the backbone of the infantry, maintaining the line in battle and participating in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were well-trained and equipped with fine armor and weapons, and they comprised the backbone of the infantry. Archers Archers were able to provide essential help from a distance, while knights and men-at-arms were frequently at the forefront of the battle. Archers were typically stationed behind the infantry or on elevated ground to maximize their range and effectiveness. Archers specialized in the usage of a variety of bows, which varied based on the location they fought in, including longbows, crossbows, and shortbows. Their arrows were capable of harassing and weakening enemy formations, as well as targeting high-value foes like as knights and commanders. Archers played a particularly significant part in medieval armies because of their ability to oppose the heavy cavalry charges commanded by knights. This gave medieval forces a degree of tactical flexibility. Pikemen. Pikemen were typically stationed in the front lines of the battlefield because of the effectiveness of their long pikes in combating cavalry. Their long weapons prevented opposing knights and cavalry from bursting through, providing a first line of defense for the archers and men-at-arms that were behind them in the line of battle. Light Infantry Light infantry, which consisted of soldiers who wore lighter armor and carried lighter weapons, served in a variety of capacities, including skirmishing and disturbing enemy lines, acting as scouts, and delivering messages. Because of their dexterity and quickness, hit-and-run strategies suited them well, and they frequently filled in the gaps in the army where they were needed. Siege Engineers Siege engineers had a specific function in operating heavy machinery such as trebuchets and catapults. Although they are more often associated with sieges than open field conflicts, siege engineers played an important part in both types of conflict. These machines had the ability to launch enormous stones or fireballs, wreaking havoc and creating massive destruction among the opposing ranks. When utilized strategically, Siege engineers had a significant impact on the outcome of battles because of their ability to break fortifications. Peasant soldiers. Peasant soldiers, sometimes known as levies, were the untrained masses that typically made up the majority of medieval armies. They were frequently referred to as such. Peasant soldiers were mostly farmers, laborers, or craftsmen who were conscripted into service. In contrast, knights and men-at-arms were trained professionals who had access to high-quality weapons. Peasant soldiers were typically not. They were sometimes poorly armed, sometimes having nothing more than farming instruments like scythes or pitchforks, and their armor was at most primitive, generally consisting of padded clothes or leather rather than metal. They were also often poorly protected, often having nothing more than farming tools like scythes or pitchforks. In spite of the fact that they lacked both training and equipment, the sheer quantity of people in their ranks made them a formidable opponent, particularly when combined with other soldiers who possessed greater levels of expertise. However, their lack of expertise rendered them susceptible to attack, and as a result, they suffered a large number of casualties. This was especially true when they faced opponents that were either well-trained or well-armored. 
The peasant soldiers of many medieval armies provided the manpower that was frequently essential for large-scale operations or sieges. Peasant soldiers were the backbone of many medieval armies. Mercenaries Mercenaries, or warriors that fight for pay rather than allegiance, were the final variable that contributed to the game's unpredictable nature. Their abilities and equipment were extremely diverse, and depending on their level of proficiency, they could undertake duties that were analogous to those of archers or men-at-arms. What to expect on the day of battle? There is a great deal of planning done before the start of the conflict. Soldiers will spend days and sometimes even weeks rehearsing formations, polishing their weapons, and repairing their armor. While knights and squires care after their horses, archers are responsible for fletching their arrows. Because both sides are aware that the upcoming combat might mean life or death as well as success or failure, the atmosphere is dense with suspense. On the morning of the fight, just as dawn is breaking, both forces line up facing each other, frequently with a field or a hill between them. In order to inspire their men, the leaders offer impassioned speeches in which they praise God, the king, and their country. After that, there is a terrible calm that settles over the battlefield, which is only broken by the eerie cries of birds in the distance and the rustling of banners in the wind. The Attack The conflict starts all of a sudden when a trumpet blows or a commander gives the signal to commence. Cavalry charges are typically the first to break the hush, with the riders' warhorses racing at full speed towards the opposing line of defense. The weight of the charge causes the ground to shake, and the initial collision is typically catastrophic, with lances shattering and men falling to the ground, either injured or dead. The ground shakes. After the first charge, the fight devolves into a chaotic melee as both sides close in on one another. In order to break through the enemy lines, soldiers engage in deadly hand-to-hand -hand fighting using weapons such as swords, axes, and maces. The objective of the archers is to kill as many of their opponents as they can with each salvo of arrows that they fire. The din is deafening, what with the clashing of blades, the screams of the injured, and the war cries of those who are still engaged in the conflict. How it all ends. Exhaustion starts to set in as the day goes on and on. On the battlefield, the weight of armor and weaponry gradually becomes intolerable, and the number of dead and injured quickly accumulates. The overwhelming aromas that can be smelled are blood, sweat, and death. The bodies of many warriors are pushed well beyond their limits of endurance, and they continue to fight solely on adrenaline. When one side ultimately gives up the fight and flees, the winners will frequently give chase, with the objective of capturing or killing as many of the fleeing adversaries as they can. When this occurs, the battlefield is a dreadful sight to behold. It is covered with those who are dead or dying, the ground is muddy and worn down, and it is strewn with shattered weapons and pieces of armor. Participating in a combat throughout the Middle Ages was a terrible and bloody event. It was a place where the ideas of honor and chivalry were frequently overwhelmed by the harsh reality of combat, which included death, injury, and the ever-present fear of being defeated. The reality of medieval battle, however, was much more complicated and significantly less glamorous than what was depicted in stories and ballads from the time period. It was a momentous occasion that very few people would ever forget, and it influenced the development of history one conflict at a time. We hope you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're a history addict, and please let us know about what civilization or time period we should talk about. Also, watch another video here.